Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. So, in this video I'm going to be responding to the Young Turks and their response to the New York Times article about how evil YouTube radicalizes people to the, the far right and turns your normal average teenage boy into a white supremacist neo-Nazi. You know, after watching maybe two or three Sargon videos or something like that, you know. I, I guess a couple of Philip DeFranco and a, a random McCam video as well, just for good measure. So the Young Turks have some very interesting things to say about this New York Times article. But before I get to the Young Turks, I do want to have a quick look at the New York Times article. I know... You've probably seen a hundred videos on it before, so I'm not going to go through it in great detail. I just want to have a very brief look at it, just in case someone's watching it and for some reason they haven't uh, read it or heard about it. Possibly someone's watching this in the future. And I do want to have a look at one of their citations, uh, which I haven't seen any other videos do. So I do want to have a quick look at that because it's fucking hilarious. And the fact that the New York Times has used this as a citation is fucking hilarious. But we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, let's start with the New York Times. So, maybe about three or four years ago, I started seeing a lot of articles come out. Well, there's three or four articles that came out in a short period of time, which basically said that uh, there was a, a former men's rights activist who was speaking out against the men's rights movement because he had seen the light. He had become woke and had gone to the the good side. He had converted from a men's rights activist to a, a feminist and become a social justice warrior. Now, all these articles sounded like bullshit to me. They sounded like propaganda just because the so-called former MRA sounded more like a stereotype that a feminist or a social justice warrior would construct of an MRA. You know, they would say things like um, MRAs believed in a matriarchy, which we don't. But that's something that feminists constantly claim that we do. They would refer to the men's rights movement as the MRA. Um, yeah, when you say the MRA, you're talking about an individual men's rights activist, not the movement. These are things that an actual MRA would know. Strangely, these people didn't. So, you know, maybe they watched a couple of YouTube videos and that's about it. I think that's as deep as they went. And not MRA videos, but just, I don't know, anti-feminist uh, cringe videos or something like that. For the record, that doesn't make you an MRA. But like I said, these articles sounded like bullshit to me. And uh, this one from the New York Times, yeah, that's it's sounding a little bit like bullshit to me too. It starts off with, Caleb Kane was a college dropout looking for direction. He turned to YouTube. Caleb Kane, that, that sounds like a character from a Stephen King novel, doesn't it? I mean, who knows, maybe it's his real name. But, you know, it does sound like a character from a Stephen King novel. Which I think is appropriate, considering most of this is probably fiction. Soon he was pulled into a far-right universe, watching thousands of videos filled with conspiracy theories, misogyny, and racism. Well, it would be interesting to define the, the terms used in this paragraph, wouldn't it? Uh, how... How do you define far right? How do you, how do you define conspiracy theories? I mean, I personally would consider patriarchy theory to be a conspiracy theory, but I'm sure the author of this New York Times article doesn't. How do you define misogyny? Once again, I would say feminism is misogynist because it reduces women to victims who have absolutely no autonomy. But, there are many feminists who say that men's rights activists are actually misogynist because we want to talk about men's issues. So, yeah, it's not really a clearly defined word, is it? And, of course, racism. Well, I consider a lot of the uh, the videos done by the Young Turks to be racism, but I'm guessing that's not what 
this author is talking about. It continues with, I was brainwashed. Hmm. So, uh, Caleb Kane was brainwashed by random YouTube videos. That's interesting. Uh, I wonder what happens to the people who go to university and go through gender studies courses. Hmm. If we're going to class watching YouTube videos as brainwashing, what would we class gender studies? That's an interesting question, isn't it? What a shame the author at the New York Times doesn't ask that question. I guess that would be inconvenient. It goes on to say, Caleb Kane pulled a Glock pistol from his waistband, took out the magazine and casually tossed both onto the kitchen counter. I bought it the day after I got death threats, he said. I, I think he is a character from a Stephen King novel. The threats, Mr. Kane explained, came from right-wing trolls in response to a video he, he had posted on YouTube a few days earlier. In the video, he told the story of how, as a liberal college dropout struggling to find his place in the world, he had gotten suckered into a vortex of far-right politics on YouTube. Yeah, you have to look out for those vortexes on YouTube. They're, they're pretty dangerous. I fell down the alt-right rabbit hole, he said in the video. Now, I want you to take note of the term rabbit hole. I'll bring this up again in a little while. So the article goes on talking about his experience being radicalized by the far right on YouTube. And uh, you know, it mentions things like Muslim immigration and cultural Marxism. And, of course, that feminism was a dangerous ideology. Yeah, which it is. The article goes on to say, Over years of reporting on internet culture, I've heard countless versions of Mr. Kane's story. An aimless young man, usually white, frequently interested in video games, visits YouTube looking for direction or distraction, and is seduced by a community of far-right creators. This is a little known fact, but YouTube uses subliminal messages to brainwash uh, males. Just males, by the way. It's uh, it's like that shitty episode of The Twilight Zone that I covered in a recent video. Some young men discover far-right videos by accident, while others seek them out. Some travel all the way to neo-Nazism, while others stop at milder forms of bigotry. Milder forms of bigotry? You mean like saying men have issues too? Is that is that the type of bigotry you mean? I'm guessing that's that's probably what you mean, right? Something like that. I mean, considering Dr. Randa McCann was included in this. Yes, that far-right extremist neo-Nazi Dr. Randa McCann. He's, uh, yeah. Can't get much further right than Doc, can you? <laughs> <laughs> now this next bit they give us a citation which i really want to have a, a little bit of time looking at because it's fucking hilarious the article says it has also been a useful recruiting tool for far-right extremist groups Ballincat, an investigative news site analyzed messages from far-right chat rooms and found that youtube was cited as the most frequent cause of members red pilling an internet slang term for converting to right-wing beliefs. Ah, oh, is that what red pilling means? It means you convert to right-wing beliefs. Okay. So let's have a look at their um, their citation. It's from Bellingcat, the home of online investigations. Well, I assume that they've done a, a really good job if they're the home of online investigations. I'm sure their research is top-notch and not full of mistakes at all. It's called From Memes to Infowars, How 75 Fascist Activists Were Red-Pilled. Oh, so they looked at 75 people. And from that, the New York Times is concluding that YouTube is the main cause of radicalizing people to the far right. Um, a sample size of 75 people. And remember, not all of these were radicalized to the right by YouTube. Only a portion. Yeah. Now, the New York Times article says, with 2 billion monthly active users uploading more than 500 hours of video every minute, 2 billion monthly active users, 2 billion, and this article, their citation is looking at 75. 
75 out of 2 billion. And remember, not all of them were red-pilled by uh, by evil old right-wing YouTube. Now, this article from Bellingcat, the home of online investigation, explains to us what red-pilling is. An online community develops its own lingo over time. Among fascist activists, red-pilling means converting someone to fascism, racism, and anti-Semitic beliefs. Oh, is that what it means? So when Cassie J made her movie The Red Pill, that was uh, about the fascist movement, was it? That's that's interesting. The term originates with The Matrix, a popular 1999 film. The protagonist is offered a choice between a red pill, which will open his eyes to the reality of a machine-dominated world, and a blue pill, which will return him to ignorance and safety. The definition of red pill, as used by fascists, is rather elastic. Yes. Now, remember earlier I said keep in mind the term down the rabbit hole? Yeah, well, red pill is like that. It can be used by many different groups in many different ways. You can be red pilled about many different things. Just like you can go down the rabbit hole, right? If a left winger goes to a right wing group, they are essentially going down the rabbit hole. And the opposite is true. If a right winger goes to a left wing group, that is essentially going down the rabbit hole. Of course, the term isn't only used for politics. It can be used for anything where someone goes to uh, go somewhere where they're out of their depth, where they're going to somewhere new or different or strange. And you wouldn't associate the term down the rabbit hole with left wing or right wing or any other group for that matter. And the term red pill is exactly the same. It shouldn't be associated with fascists or the far right, or anything like that. It simply means gaining access to some information that you previously didn't have and changing your opinion. Uh, Actually, the left-wingers, the far left, have a, a term very similar to that. They call it getting woke. But this explanation of the red pill goes on. There appears to be no agreed upon standard for when a human being is red pilled. Most fascist activists agree that acknowledgement of the Jewish question, or JQ, is critical. Oh, so so to be red-pilled, you must hate Jews. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, this seems like a really well-researched uh, article. Um, I, I don't know how anyone could find fault with this research. Now, I'm not going to go through this entire research, but I will leave a link below so you can read it yourself and have a good laugh at it. But there are one or two little things more I want to point out quickly before getting to the Young Turks. Uh, Like this section, for example. Four fascists say that they were red-pilled while tripping on LSD. User Europa is a typical example of this trend. He claims his interest in Nazism started in childhood with his dad watching Hitler documentaries every day. Well, I guess the History Channel has a lot to answer for. It's clearly a pipeline to Nazism. Those Hitler documentaries clearly are promoting Nazism, right? Yeah, maybe maybe not. Europa carried his interest into adulthood, watching Hitler documentaries and speeches while taking LSD. This convinced him to start researching Nazism, which eventually inspired him to become an activist. Uh, yep. Yeah. I've always said there should be a law against... Uh, watching the History Channel on LSD. It's it's just a, a recipe for disaster. Clearly, right? Uh, now, here's another hilarious part from this research. I should note that one of the more frustrating elements about covering the fascist right is that much of what they say sounds ridiculous and makes them appear to be less than serious. Yeah, do you think maybe that's because the people you're quoting aren't serious? Do you think maybe they're just shitposting? Do you think what they're they're saying is making fun of people like you? Uh, No, no, that has never occurred to you, has it? (laughs) It goes on to say, This is why it is important to remember that these groups have a body count and represent a real threat. Their absurdity does not negate their danger. Yes, when someone shit posts on the internet, you know, you just know 
that they're about five minutes away from a mass killing. It then goes on to explain what Keck is. But the funny part about that is when they talk about the Kekistani flag. And over time, Kekistan came to be used as something of a Trojan horse by the fascist right. One good example is the flag of Kekistan. This design of the flag, benign at first glance, is just a colour inverted variant of the German Kreis flag, battle flag, from the Nazi era. Yeah. Um, yes, that's... You, you caught us. You caught us. Uh, clearly, we're Nazis in disguise. It couldn't possibly be that the creators of the Kekistan flag made it to make fun of people who see Nazis everywhere, knowing that they would have a, a piss fit over it. No, it definitely not that. It definitely wasn't bait. It definitely wasn't humour. It definitely wasn't sarcasm. No, it's a Nazi Trojan horse. Of course. Who could deny that? Well, I, I guess anyone with an ounce of common sense. Uh, but that's probably a sign that you're a Nazi too. <sighs> anyway, on to the Young Turks. YouTube is attempting to walk us through how it is that young men get radicalized to the right on YouTube, which is an important story to explain. However, even though there are really important kernels of truth in this piece, I just want to note that there were a few things that uh, the writer here, Kevin Roos, did get wrong. You mean like one of the citations he used, Anna, because uh, I have a hard time accepting anything from anyone who would consider that to be a reliable source, okay? Uh, but you're not talking about his citations, are you? Because you haven't even bothered reading the citations. Uh, to be honest, Anna, I'd be surprised if you've actually read the article. I'm sure you've just had an intern uh, look through it and give you the notes because the Young Turks never read citations. That's one of my main criticisms of them. But anyway, continue, Anna. Tell us what this journalist got wrong. So, for instance, when you click on the link to this article, the first thing you see is this interactive, you know, thing that YouTube has. I'm sorry, New York Times has. And they have photos of all of these right-wing content creators. Uh, yes, uh, famous right-wing uh, commentators like uh, Dr. Random McCam up in the corner there, in case you missed him. Uh, yes, Doc, <laughs> who's, who's famous for singing about the Jewish problem. Uh, yeah, that's like the majority of his work, I think. <laughs> you should be proud of yourself, Doc. You made it to the New York Times. Somehow, I don't, I'm not exactly sure how, uh, but apparently you're a gateway to Nazism. So, um, and they include Jink facing yeah. off with, with Alex Jones. And I just feel like they included photos of some YouTube creators who are not radical, who are not, you know, on the extreme end of either, you know, yeah. either end of the spectrum. Okay, so the picture the Young Turks show us is uh, a video from Computing Forever, and it's obviously about the argument between Jenk and Alex Jones. So, yes, technically it is a picture of Jenk, but it's not one of the Young Turks videos. It's a video about the Young Turks. So I, I know what uh, New York Times said in terms of why they did that. I looked it up, um, it, but it, I think they're still wrong. So what they're saying is they looked at at the history of Caleb Kane, the guy that they tracked, and they put up videos that he watched. No, so he happened to have watched the video of uh, the fight that uh, we had with Alex Jones. Everybody watched that one. Well, yeah. and, but so did everybody on the planet. Yeah. That was, no, but by the way, it's not much of an exaggeration. That was the night of Trump's inauguration, and Trump's inaug uh, acceptance speech was number two to that video of Alex Jones coming onto our set. That was number one on Facebook that day. So right. almost everybody's seen that video. Uh, that's also an exaggeration. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, and Phil DeFranco's on that list. Right. That, there we go. Yes. Yeah. And, and and Phil, I think, is a little bit more right conservative than we are. Right wing. Yeah. Not. I yeah, but to be fair, just about everyone is more right wing than you guys. I mean, when you're that far left, everyone looks like a right wing Nazi. Right. That's part of the problem. I think I know he's more conservative than we are. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but. He's not at all radical, and and so I get it. That guy happened to watch Phil DeFranco at some point, but you don't fully explain that in the article. So, 
Yeah, and that's part of the problem, isn't it? Uh, but unfortunately, the Young Turks don't seem to understand but that the author of the New York Times article isn't interested in being accurate. He's just interested in creating a narrative. This is propaganda, it's not journalism. And the Young Turks don't seem to get that. They think it's just bad journalism. And they explain why, and some of the reasons they explain why they think it's, uh, it's bad journalism is quite amusing. Uh, some I agree with, like the point Jenk just made, but some, some are pretty fucking funny, and we'll get to them, don't worry. If you see, if you're just reading the article, all of a sudden you're like, is Phil DeFranco one of the most radical people on YouTube? And he's not, and that's not fair, and they should have put more thought behind it. But I think the substance of the article is both really good, as we're gonna explain, but also has bigger problems. Yeah, so let's let's uh, take a look at what Kevin Rose wrote about. Uh, first, he says that YouTube has been a godsend for hyper-partisans on all sides. It has allowed them to bypass traditional gatekeepers and broadcast their views to mainstream audiences and has helped once obscure commenters or commentators build lucrative media businesses. So honestly, this was the part of his piece that I had the most like issue with because on all sides, I don't I don't see an issue right now where left wingers are radicalizing young men and and convincing them to carry out, you know, acts of violence or or carry out harassment of specific individuals whom they disagree with. I'm seeing that a lot on the right. Well, that is a very interesting point of view and considering that I know of three mass shooters who were subscribed to the Young Turks. The first one, uh, well, it's probably a familiar name for anyone who's been watching my content for a long time, and that is one Mr. Elliot Roger. Now, why this name is particularly interesting is because there are literally hundreds of feminist articles on the internet claiming that Elliot Roger was associated with the men's rights movement, that the men's rights movement influenced him, and were the cause for his mass shooting. Uh, of course, none of this is actually true, and all these articles can be traced back to one article which started with a lie, which stated that Elliot Roger was subscribed to numerous MRA channels on YouTube. Once again, let me stress, that's not true. Elliot was subscribed to zero men's rights channels on YouTube, not a single fucking one. But despite that, we have hundreds of articles claiming that he was. Now, why this is interesting is Elliot was subscribed to the Young Turks. Now, does that mean that the Young Turks influenced him, that they brainwashed him into doing a mass shooting? Of course not. I mean, there are millions of people subscribed to the Young Turks. I'm one of them. Just because he was subscribed to the Young Turks doesn't mean he was radicalized by them. But I do have to point out the irony that he was subscribed to no men's rights channels, yet is constantly referred to as an MRA or influenced by MRAs while being subscribed to the Young Turks, and this is ignored by the media constantly. But like I said, I know of three mass shooters subscribed to the Young Turks. He's only the first. An arrest in that deadly mall shooting in Washington State. Yeah, there's the mugshot of the suspect. His name is Archon Seaton. He's 20 years old. Police say he walked into the Cascade Mall in Burlington, Washington, opened fire, and killed five people inside of a Macy's. Hmm. This morning, ABC News has identified a MySpace page that apparently belongs to Seaton and contains pictures of him posing with various firearms. Police say they were able to track him down through tips and security footage, the arrest coming just as a prayer service was being held for the five victims. ABC's Neil Karlinski is right there in Berlin. And he was subscribed to the Young Turks. Now, does that mean that the Young Turks influenced him and that they're responsible for his mass shooting? Um, no. I mean, I, I guess technically it's possible, but the likelihood is no, they had no influence on him whatsoever. However, if this guy had have been subscribed to a men's rights channel or even a pickup channel, I guarantee you there'd be hundreds of articles claiming that he was a men's rights activist and the men's rights movement pushes people towards extremism. I mean, I'm surprised there aren't articles saying that anyway, 
even though he he subscribed to no channels, no men's rights channels, that is. And if he was subscribed to, you know, anyone who criticised feminism or social justice advocates or anything like that, I guarantee you there would be articles claiming that that was the influence on him. But the Young Turks get a free pass in the media for some reason. I guess because they have the right type of politics, right? So I've given you two examples so far of mass shooters who were subscribed to the Young Turks. And like I said, I can honestly say I don't think the Young Turks influenced either of them. But the third one's a totally different story. Uh, no, I'm not okay with it. I wouldn't give a damn if well, we have 7 billion people on the planet. Hey, listen, if 6 billion, 999 million, and 999,000 of you were okay with this, I wouldn't be okay with it. I would have rebelled. I would have stepped in. I would have came through. I would have not complied. I would have died by protecting that woman. If that, if my life Listen, she's going to be protected, period, whether my life gets taken or not. And this is a man's duty, you see. I'm not okay with it. Whenever it's a black man, then it's domestic violence. But see, what I see when I look at that, a woman, see, see these officers aren't thinking. So I'm not thinking. I'm instincts without thinking. This is what I mean. You got you to gotta start being like this because they're not thinking. So you have to go off instincts because once you start thinking, you'll start confusing shit. You'll start second guessing natural instinct, which is natural law. You, you are naturally prone. You see, you know, because again, I don't see uniform. You see, just like he said, they're defending her. The damn city is, no, the, I mean, they're defending the cops. The city is defending the cops. Who's going to be, who's there to defend the woman? We see this all over the place. White women, black women, Asian women. This is everywhere. This ain't no race thing. These motherfuckers is animals. They're not thinking. So this is what, this is what I see. I'm not thinking. I see two men, both armed, attacking a pregnant woman who was not attempting to harm them. And they know she's pregnant. No, she don't even got to be pregnant. She's a woman. She's not attempting to harm you. That's all I see. Two armed men. Again, let me repeat. Because this is very simple. Again, thinking when you start thinking, that's you're gonna over. You're gonna complicate it. It doesn't take this much shit. Two men. One woman. Both of the men have weapons. And they're slamming her to the ground. That was one of many response videos made by Gavin Long towards the Young Turks. Uh, response videos in which Gavin Long agreed with the Young Turks about cop violence, in particular violence towards African Americans. Uh, now, why is this relevant? Well, because Gavin Long went on to shoot six cops, three of which died. So, in this case, there is a clear argument for the Young Turks being a major influence on this particular mass killer. The Young Turks routinely talk about cop violence towards African Americans. Gavin Long replied to the Young Turks, agreeing with them about cop violence towards African Americans. He then went and shot six cops, three of which died. Yeah, that's a pretty strong case for the Young Turks influencing uh, this particular person. Allegations of influencing mass shooters has been made numerous times in the media for far less. Uh, Elliot Roger and the men's rights movement, for example, where there's absolutely no evidence, yet it resulted in hundreds of articles. Where are the articles about Gavin Long and the Young Turks? I don't see any New York Times articles uh, talking about it, strangely. I, I guess maybe the Young Turks just have the right type of politics, right?
And there was never a single example of anyone on the left that's doing that. So look, I, I, I know I'm focusing on what I didn't like about the piece, but it really just stops here because there is an important story to be told here, and I think it is an important lesson to learn, especially if you are an executive at one of these social media platforms. But I do worry that the wrong lessons will be learned from this. Yeah, but look, uh, what you're saying is really important though. And in a lot of ways, this is mainstream media 101, for better and for worse. So let me give my perspective and we'll all talk it through. So the good part of this, which mainstream media does do a lot, especially the New York Times, is this good investigative reporting and they looked into it's good investigative reporting that is the funniest joke i've heard all day jank that is fucking hilarious good investigative reporting yes we're fucking dodgy citations and a biased conclusion which is written before any research is done and i use the term research very loosely here so yeah it, this is not good journalism Jenk, it's propaganda. But go on, Jenk. Uh, describe to us how this is somehow good journalism. I'm I'm curious. To it, and they see how somebody got radicalized. And this uh, guy, Caleb Kane, actually started out as a progressive. Starts watching one of these videos, and then YouTube serves more videos in the suggested videos part because they think he's more likely to watch related videos that are similar. And it's true, and that makes sense. And it, that algorithm does work. More people watch YouTube for longer periods of time because of that algorithm. So he gets sucked into uh, more and more radical ideas and goes further down the rabbit hole. The cops came in. You're supposed to be the de-escalator. You came in and escalated the situation, which makes no sense. Police officers are po supposed to make peace. You came in and made it war. That's an interesting story to write, so give them credit for that. Yes. So, and it's a good way of telling that story through this one individual, uh, and while getting at macro trends. But it also does two principal problems in mainstream media. One is calling everything even. Well, you just wrote a piece about how people become radicalized on the right. Why do you have to throw shade at the left when you don't have any evidence of that? Yes. <laughs> Jenk is turning out to be one of my favorite comedians because he, he is so funny. The, the lines he keeps coming out with, it's pure comedy gold. I mean, we have a massively long article here which constantly is talking about the evil far right, the evil far right white supremacist neo-Nazis. Uh, most of the people who are mentioned, by the way, are not far right or even right winger and most definitely not neo-Nazis. But, you know, why let the facts get in the way, right? So the article is clearly aimed at the right, or what it claims to be the right, and doesn't take any shots at the left apart from one sentence where it says that, it radical that radicals from both sides tend to go there. That's the only time that it says anything negative about the left wing. And in fact, it promotes left-wing content creators like ContraPoints. So it's actually pro-left-wing. But somehow, somehow Jenk interprets this as it being equally against the left as it is against the right. Astounding, absolutely astounding. Just because of one fucking sentence. Pure comedy gold, Jenk. You, you really are an amazing comedian. Uh, you should give up this fake journalism shit and uh, and do some stand up. It's <laughs> fucking amazing. That's a false equivalency. And that's what yeah. they but they can't write the piece just about the right wing because their editors will say, now you have, remember you have to do political correctness and blame the left wing too. But they didn't do anything. It doesn't matter. Just blame the left wing and pretend they're also radicals and also, with no evidence at all. And, and <laughs> yeah, because the evidence against the so-called right is so good, Cenk. I mean, uh, that one citation with the Kekistani flag, yeah, fantastic journalism there. Who could fault that, right? <laughs> this tactic, you know, in order to avoid 
criticism doesn't even work. I mean, if you go to That's a great point. If you go to Twitter, I mean, all you see is Dave Rubin, other members of the so-called IDW crying and whining about this piece. And so, stop trying to appease the right. Just do the reporting, be accurate in the reporting, and stop drawing these ridiculous false equivalencies. Which they don't do. I'm I'm pretty convinced at this point that Jenk and Anna never read the article. I'm pretty sure they had an intern go through it and pick out a couple of paragraphs. And they've read this one paragraph which mentions that there are radicals from both sides using YouTube, right? And, and assumed that there's more to it somehow. I, I don't know how else they could come to that conclusion. Uh, yeah, they must have read the article. What can I say? <laughs> it's typical Young Turks. And, 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 the, and the third point I wanted to make about how it's mainstream media 101 is also progressives are invisible. If you're gonna cover them at all, just do generic smears without any evidence to back it up, but largely don't cover them. At the end of the long piece, they say, "Oh, but there's these smaller YouTube channels that fight back against the right wing, contra points, etc. And so I'm glad at least they're in there, right? But they conclude, but golly gee, on YouTube, the right wing is dominant and there's no big left wing to oppose them. I mean, I don't know, I, I don't want to say you did a bad job of journalism there, because like people get really upset about that and then they think we're the bad guys for pointing it out. But you did this giant piece for the New York Times and you couldn't figure out that the biggest channel that, that talks about politics on YouTube is us, it's the Young Turks, and we're left-leaning. We call ourselves home of progressives. Surprise, surprise, the true purpose of the article goes right over the head of Jenk. I'm shocked. Uh, let, let me explain it to you, Jenk, okay? The article is not meant to be a proper representation of reality. It's what we call propaganda, okay? They don't care that you are a massive left-wing outlet on YouTube because that goes against their narrative. Their narrative is YouTube is bad, it's evil because it's right wing and therefore it should be taken down or destroyed or limited or something. Now why would they want to do this? Well because because it's not traditional media is it? Because your average person can express their opinion and have a voice as opposed to going through the traditional media filter. That's what we call an ulterior motive, Jenk. That is why they constantly pump out these articles claiming that YouTube is a right-wing hub. That is why they ignore the Young Turks, despite the fact that they're so large. It's not journalism, Jenk. It's not representing reality. It's not presenting all the facts. It's propaganda with a purpose. But you'll never see that because you're so pissed off that you weren't mentioned. And, uh, you know, I think you should have been mentioned, along with Gavin Long, right? I mean, if it was proper journalism, that's what we would be getting. Right, Jenk? In fact, if you just analyze a YouTube algorithm, and I feel bad about this, but a lot of those guys wrote off of us. So they're, the way that they would mar make their mark is, Hey, since Young Turks is gigantic, we'll do a critique or a takedown of the Young Turks. We'll get into their suggested videos. They would even tag us and put Young Turks or Cenk Uger or Anna Kasparian in videos that had nothing to do with us in order to get bigger. So you missed a giant part of the story. And why? Because the group think is progressives are irrelevant. Now, admittedly, I've done my fair share of response videos to the Young Turks. In fact, you're watching one right now. Obviously, but I've never made one to try to piggyback off their success. There are basically two reasons why I do response videos to the Young Turks. Uh, firstly, because they get shit wrong on a regular basis. This is largely because they read an article, a left-wing article, which agrees with their politics, and they don't do any further research. They don't investigate the claims to see if they're correct. They don't read the citations to see if they're correct. They just assume that the article is 100% correct and then they comment on it. And often they misquote the article as well. It's uh, amazing stuff to watch. But that shit needs to be called out. And other times they just come out with really stupid fucking statements. And those need to be called out as well.
Now, speaking of stupid statements, they've come out with a, a huge number this year. And I could have made a lot more Young Turks videos than the ones I've made. But I decided not to subject my viewers to constant weekly Young Turks rants. I care about you guys. I don't want to subject you to, uh, to too much Anna and Jenk. That would just be too much. So, no, I'm, I'm not piggybacking off the Young Turks. Uh, others, maybe. There may be people who do that, but uh, definitely not in my case. Don't even bother looking. Who cares if there's progressives or not on YouTube? Who cares if they're the largest news channel, the largest political channel? Don't care, don't cover them. And that's just the giant failure, it just is. Now, if you think, hey, you're biased, I don't, look, Kevin, anyone else, go look up the numbers. The numbers don't lie. We have way more subscribers, way more views than any of those channels, and a lot of those channels combined. So, Ryan, I mean, you work in independent media, and you know how, you know, mainstream media is not necessarily nice or complimentary and to independent media sources and to independent media, especially on YouTube. So, like, what is your take on the way that they've handled this story? And, and, I mean, look, there is an important story to tell here, and I think that they did a good job in outlining how one individual, Caleb Kane, became radicalized. And by the city defending the cops, they are legally defending tyranny. This is the definition, legally and literally defending tyranny. And you know, when it comes to tyranny with me, rebellion is a responsibility. Uh, but do you think that they got the full picture of what's going on? And look, I feel like they're pushing for an algorithm change that actually puts independent media sources at a significant disadvantage. Well, ignoring the progressive side of the equation, while also kind of throwing in a, a weird both sides thing that isn't then backed up by any other reporting, is, like you said, 101. And you, you almost have to psychoanalyze the media to, to get at some type of explanation. And part of it, I think, is so reporters are kind of culturally closer to the left. Like this is a right wing criticism and it is also true. Mm -hmm. Like they are, they're, they're pro-choice, they live in cities, you know, they, their families vote Democratic. If, if they vote, they probably vote Democratic too. They're more, but they're more in the centrist wing of it. And as a result of that, they sometimes overcompensate by covering the right, but then also have a distance with the right that allows them some kind of genuine Objectivity is too strong of a, of a word, but because there's this distance, they don't actually they don't have a dog in that in that fight. They think it's weird and interesting, mm -hmm. and so covering the alt right is like going to the diner and you know asking the guy in Ohio what he thinks about the upcoming election. Whereas their proximity to the left leaves them hostile in a in a strange way mm -hmm. to the left, and so it's just easier for them uh, to just ignore them. Partly. Oh, I see. So the the mainstream media is centrist left, right? They're not far left at all. Definitely no far left element to them whatsoever. And uh, they're more apparently they're more hostile to the left than they are to the right. Okay, that, that makes perfect sense. Uh, of course, he leaves out the bit where much of the media, much of the mainstream media, is so far to the left that they see everyone else as being far right. Yeah, I, I think that's a major problem too. Uh, centrists don't exist in their eyes. Everyone else is a far right extremist neo-Nazi. That's how far left they are, for fuck's sake. There's, there's this belief, and you see it on Twitter all the time among, among people who are genuinely centrist, but if you point that out to them, they're infuriated by it. They, yes. think, they think they are correct about it. Uh, their their views and and that that means they are therefore the most progressive they're progressive minded people mm -hmm. and so the idea that there's someone to their left is kind of offensive to them bothers them so yeah, it's kind of easier to just pretend they don't exist 100 percent. i think that's exactly right look our critique is not out of nowhere it's it's based on what we have observed uh, throughout all this time and, and we can document for, uh, in every instance, the, the the bias that the mainstream media has against progressives. This just happened. Oh, the bias is against progressives. Here I thought it was against anyone who wasn't a progressive. 
you know, where the media constantly refers to non-progressives as white supremacist neo-Nazis, even when they're clearly not white supremacist neo-Nazis? It was to be a glaring case because at the end of the article, they say there is no big YouTube presence, uh, left-wing presence on YouTube. And that's just factually wildly incorrect. I mean, we're not just talking about the Young Turks. How about the TRT network? Kyle Kalinske and Secular Talk dwarfs most of the right wing channels. So does Majority Report. So does Jimmy Dory. So you can go on and on and on, whether they're in our network or not. And they didn't bother to do the research, partly, I think, because of what Ryan's saying. Like, yeah, the left, I know the left. Right. No, you don't. No, you don't. Right. In fact, you're oftentimes more opposed to the left because it feels more personal to you. So when the left critique happens and it's backed up by facts, that that's more troubling because when the right wing does a critique, it's just gobbledygook. Like, ah, you hate us. That's why you're discriminating against us. We should be allowed to hate black people and gay people, and you're taking away my rights. Oh, it's the left which backs their stuff up with facts. Oh, is that the case? That's that's probably why I've pointed out so many fucking bullshit arguments and bad citations in the last six years, right? Because the left is nothing but factual. Now, for the record, I'm not suggesting that the right is any better. And the main reason I focus mainly on the left is because, well, they pretty much control the media at the moment. And they're the main ones taking shots at the men's rights movement. But the notion that the left is nothing but factual and always backs themselves up with good citations is just fucking hilarious. Especially coming from Cenk, from the Young Turks. Like I said earlier, their idea of journalism is reading an article and believing it without doing any further research, without checking citations, without taking into account that the journalists could have got the facts wrong or outright lied. Uh, none of that is considered if the article agrees with their predetermined opinions. They just take it as fact. That's not journalism. That's lazy fucking bullshit. That's easy to dismiss. And when, when right-wingers write into newspapers, uh, that, that leads to soul-searching on the parts of editors mm -hmm. who, who want to, you know, they, they want to they absorb this criticism, they want to respond to it fairly and treat it with the respect it, 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 it deserves, and it'll wind up in the letter to the editor section, they might, it might go to an ombudsman, and it will possibly lead to actual changes in coverage. If left-wingers write in to a newspaper, they're shouted back at right. by yeah, the it, newspaper. Yeah, yeah. Get it's, it out of here. And it's, it goes even beyond that. And I, this just happened because I, I wrote an editorial that The Hill printed about how Nancy Pelosi is not a progressive. And the pushback I got was interestingly, only one Democratic lobbyist slash consultant. Every other person that yelled at me online was another member of the traditional media. <laughs> Why is it your job to defend Nancy Pelosi? Why don't you look at the article and see like, oh, that's interesting. He has an interesting critique that she actually is bottling up a lot of the progressive priorities like Medicare for all, Green New Deal, $15 minimum wage, etc. Instead, they're like, how dare you? And there's this weird anger. And then when we say, hey, you're wrong about that, they get doubly angry. They're like, oh, like it's okay if Ted Cruz yells at me, it's okay if Milo yells at me, that's okay, I expect that and I kowtow to that. Mm -hmm. But how dare this guy on the left say that I am not being reasonable, right? And so you see that screaming through this. And look, last thing I wanna say about it is, look, I don't wanna be compared to the radical, right? That's not what we do, we do facts and then we give our perspective, which is a progressive perspective. Back <laughs> Yes, that's right. The Young Turks do facts. Yep. Yeah. Reading a BuzzFeed or a Huffington Post article without checking citations, uh, that that's doing facts. Uh, well done, Jenk. Well done. You're a fucking comedian. Backed up by those facts. I did a speech in Iowa uh, just uh, a couple of days ago. I read, what, 12, 15 polls. That shows the country is massively progressive that the rest of the media completely ignores. I didn't read made up talking points like the right wing does. I read actual polls of what the American people think. But it is important in this context to talk about the watchers on the wall, okay? So what I mean by that is we've been fighting these right wing monsters online for over a decade now. We were YouTube's first partner ever back in 2005. So for 14 years we've been dealing with these guys and we've been beating them back, beating them back, winning over a lot of the folks 
like Caleb Cain and bringing them back into the progressive fold by doing logic and reasonable arguments and yes at times passionate but backed up by facts right here's the thing Jake the young Turks have a massive budget and they have a staff right now it would be easy for the young Turks to hire someone or to use someone from their existing staff to check articles to make sure they're factual to fact checked right to to read citations to make sure the article isn't biased or misleading or misquoting or using bad citations. But you don't do that. You don't do any of that. I've pointed this out numerous times. And I'm just some guy who makes videos in his home. I don't have a big budget. I don't have a staff. And I'm capable of doing the research and proving you guys wrong. So it's fucking hilarious that you claim that you're all about the facts. It's... It's just a joke, Jake. You're a fucking joke. Right. And then f to be wiped away from the history books as if that side doesn't exist. Well, yeah, sure, it's an affront to us, but it's also an affront to your readers at the New York Times because you haven't told a full story. Saying to the cops, could you just give her a moment? They, they would give, crack you in the right, head and they so did, they, they, fast. Right, they yeah, hit they me with, they hit me with, like, don't approach this. They wouldn't this, want right. you to come close. They wouldn't want me to come yeah. close. Yeah, yeah, they would get away, and if you don't get away, they're going to crack your head too. So what do you do in that situation? You just have to walk I away and let an agent it. of the state brutalize a pregnant right, woman. You take you out your it. phone, you record it, but you know it was That's already recorded. Else, yeah, so you just what if they started punching her? Right. Then, then so you, you just let it go? I, I don't know. What would you At do? what point do you step in? What point do you step in? I would open my trunk and get a tire iron and uh, then call my dad. Here's what I'm not doing. I'm not sitting and watching. That, that I don't know what I would do. And he says I'll, he'll get the tire iron. I don't know what I'll do. But I'm not sitting and watching. That's what I'm not doing. Everything else is off of that. So I'm going to protect the woman, which is my duty as a man. But I don't know what I'm what I I don't know what I'll do. I know I'm going to protect the woman, but everything else comes after me not sitting there and watching. That's the thing. You, I don't know what I would do in that situation. So if you go over and you confront the cops, which you would do in any other situation if they weren't cops. That's right. Yeah. You, 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 in you, any you, other situation, if there were two grown men pouncing on a woman who is pregnant and she's screaming and she's not a threat to anybody, you would go over there and you would start by punching those guys. That's yeah. how you would start. You would start by punching them. Get off this woman. What is your fucking problem? That's how I, you would start. But since they're cops, you can't do that. But maybe. Correction, you can do that. What do you mean you can't do that? You can't do it if you were in a, if you're thinking. This is what I'm trying to tell you. See, again, he, he said the right thing and he said the wrong thing. He said the right thing because he said in any situation, in any other situation, when there's two men pouncing on a pregnant woman who isn't harming them, isn't threatening them or anything, doing anything to them, you would start by punching them. You, I mean, you're not, even, you're not even trying to go and talk. You're going to start by punching. You're going to start by inflicting harm. So he's right. But then, this is what I'm trying to tell you. See, you start thinking. And that's that fear, that ego starts to think. And he says, but you can't because they're cops. Not with me. Not with me. See, I, these cops aren't thinking. So that's what, see, we're going to not think together. It's going to be all instincts, all natural as a man, me, protecting a woman. I'm not seeing no uniform. That That's, a costume doesn't mean a, a goddamn thing to me. I see a woman in, in harm, in danger, you see. So you got to instincts without thinking. Maybe I would do that and I'll take the jury trial. Maybe I would do that. I don't know. You, I, what if they were doing it to a dog? I wouldn't let somebody beat a dog. I wouldn't let that happen. I would stop the cop. So, yeah. But because they're cops, we're all supposed to shut down our humanity and walk away because they're doing the right thing. Those cops are brutal maniacs. 
That's what, did you see how they had her? She, there's a woman dropping off her to second grade kid. There was no crime committed. Yet we're going to brutalize this woman because she didn't do exactly as I said, even though my request is illegal. Yeah. Again, that last statement he said is very profound. She didn't do what I said, even though what I said was illegal. Even the request, even though the request that I made was illegal. <sighs> Again, I wouldn't even made it that far, but again, it's it's straight tyranny. You know, I'll go out on this definitely. And I mean, men, men in this society, they're so lost of their not even it's not even their purpose. This is what I mean. This is like what you're meant to be and do at the it's at the spiritual level. It's like past DNA. It's like Say if a lion died and he, he gets up to heaven, what'd you die for? Uh, well, I died going to, out hunting, you know, um, hunting for my family, you know, protecting my, protecting my cubs. Like, you get what I'm saying? He died out hunting for gazelles. I mean, <laughs> it's just hard to even put this shit into words. Like, the man... This is what you're born to do. You were you were made to defend men, women, and children. This is what you're meant to do. When you get to heaven, like it's not even a question. This is what you're meant to do. There's no thinking involved in none of this. Like this situation, there's zero thinking involved. Yeah, and then the um the other commentator say, um, he said. Well, I'll go on jury trial. Jur jury trial. Oh, fuck a jury trial. I'll take it to the real trial. I'll definitely go out on this one. Oh yeah, we'll we'll, we'll let Amon uh, sort this one out. Trust me, I'll definitely go out on this one. Savannah, good morning. This is where police say it all happened, where someone called 911 and reported the gunman dressed in black fatigues, armed with a rifle. When police responded, he opened fire. And now, as the city mourns its fallen officers, investigators are pouring over the gunman's twisted digital history. This morning, Baton Rouge is grieving as we learn the identities of the officers killed in that deadly encounter. Brad Garofalo with the sheriff's office for 24 years. Matthew Gerald, a rookie with Baton Rouge police. And Montrell Jackson, father of a three-month-old with the force 10 years. Just before his death, Jackson posted on Facebook his feelings about being a police officer in Baton Rouge, writing, I swear to God I love this city, but I wonder if this city loves me. In uniform, I get nasty, hateful looks, and out of uniform, some consider me a threat. I've experienced so much in my short life, and these last three days have tested me to the core. He said, if anyone out there sees me and you need a hug and a prayer, come talk to me. The chaos erupted just before 9 a.m. Sunday after police received reports of a man dressed in all black, wearing a mask and holding an AR-15 type assault rifle at a gas station less than a mile from Baton Rouge Police Headquarters. When officers arrived, the gunman opened fire. Not far, not far. This morning, police say the gunman did not lure police with that phone call, but instead carried out the ambush after a member of the public called 911. We think the suspect is down. Authorities say the lone gunman is Gavin Long, a former Marine sergeant shot dead at the scene on his 29th birthday. On July 8th, Long posted a message about warriors on his YouTube page, though it's unclear if it's related to the shootings this weekend. The man knew he couldn't go home. Either he killed his enemy or he died. Was this an ambush? We clearly believe that the individual that targeted these police officers was specifically targeting police officers. All this comes less than two weeks after the shooting death of Alton Sterling by Baton Rouge police, followed by the fatal shooting of Philando Castillo in Minnesota and the murder of five police officers in Dallas. President Obama condemning this latest violence. Nothing justifies violence against law enforcement. Attacks on police are an attack on all of us. Alton Sterling's aunt making an impassioned plea for peace. We don't want no more bloodshed. Stop this killing. Stop this killing. Stop this killing.